Shalom to everyone. Hope everyone's doing well. This video is how to cry out to Yahuwah. I have a, a few people that ask me questions and questions about crying out to Yahuwah. And our people don't understand how to cry out to Yahuwah. We don't, we, we, no one taught us this. And all through scripture, we read about this. It's amazing how it's mentioned so many times, but yet so little people even mention this, care to even mention this, as if it means nothing to them. So in this video, you will understand how to cry out to him, how to get your prayers to enter into his ears, because this is the job to get your prayer into his ears. If you can get your prayer into his ears, I promise you, he will move on your behalf no matter what the situation is. People think they are hopeless. They have, they are without any type of um, hope. They're thinking that this is a situation, no one, it's impossible, and they can't see their way out of the situation. And when you get in this particular mode when you get this situation to come upon you this is when you need to cry out to him you are in dire need of help and he is there for his people um, we are the apple of his eye and when we cry out to him we turn to him we return to him he hears our our cry and our prayer let's go into this okay this word cry um look what it means this is what many people don't understand when they hear cry or the word cry out, the only thing they think of is crying tears. Okay, that's number one. You see shed tears. But this is not the crying out that we're talking about. This is not the crying out that the scripture, I'm going to show you that in scripture what crying out is. And, and that's another thing. At the end of this video, I will give two, a couple examples in scripture of people crying out. It says shout or scream, especially to express one's fear, pain, or grief. So uh, right off the bat, we're getting a, another meaning of cry, the word cry. The word cry is not only shedding tears. It means to yell, to scream, to shout, to exclaim, to shriek, to, to screech, roar, um, to bosser it. This voice of it, it means to, it, it, it means to yell, loud voice, holler. This is what we're talking about. We're talking about screaming, yelling, shouting, hollering, loud, loudly. This is what cry out. This is what our people, they understood and this is what they knew. All right, let's go to this word here. This is the Hebrew word, 877-75, and this is Shua. This is Shua. Now we know this word Shua appears many times and it means to cry out for help. And we get this word mixed up with Shua. We have Shua and Shua. They're two different words here, meaning almost the same thing. And here's a few scriptures on this. Exodus 2 and 23, And it came to pass in the process of time the king of Egypt died, and the children of Yasharal sighed by reason of bondage and they cried and their shua came up to Elohim by reason of their bondage they were in bondage and they cried out to him because of the bondage that they were in you see if they didn't know how this crying out you do this when you are desperate you are in trouble death is upon you you this is a desperate situation and there is nothing you can do and so you need him to move on your behalf you need your prayer to enter into his ears first samuel 5 and 12 and the men that died not were sweet were smitten with the emeralds and the cry the shua of the city went up to heaven you want your cry to go up to heaven second samuel 22 and 7 in my distress, I call upon Yahuwah and cry to my Elohim, and he did hear my voice out of his temple, out of his hako, and my cry, my shua, did enter into his ears. Once again, 
You need your cry to enter into his ears. And it's something when our cries enter into his ears, he can't help himself but to move on our behalf because he love us that much. Psalms 18 and 6. In my distress, I, I cried upon Yahuwah and cried unto my Elohim. He heard my voice. Here it is, that cry. Remember, loud voice, a very loud voice. He heard my cry out of his temple, and my cry came before him even into his ears. You want your cry not to only come up before him, but also into his ears. That means he heard you, and he is ready to do. Psalms 34 and 15, the eyes of Yahuwah are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry, unto their shua. His ears right now, you just need to understand, his ears is open, wide open. At this day and age, his ears is wide open to hear our cry. The problem is we're just praying and we're not crying out. Praying and crying out is, is two different things. Psalms 39 and 12, hear my prayer, O Yahuwah, and give ear unto my cry. You see right here? He says, hear my prayer. We want him to hear our prayer, but also give ear unto my cry. Now, if prayer and cry was the same thing, he would just say, hear my cry. But no, we pray. That's when we're just talking. Uh, uh, we could be asking for something. But then there's this time when we are desperate. We're in need. We're, we're, we're starving. We're thirsty. We're dying. And we cry out unto him. We die. If, we, if he does not move, we die. It's that simple. He says, give ear to my cry. Um, hold not your shalom at my tears. Okay, in Psalms 40 and 1, I waited patiently, O Yahuwah, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He heard my shua. Psalms 102 and 1, hear my prayer, O Yahuwah, and let my shua come unto you. Psalms 145 not 1 and 19. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. This is what we need in these last days. We need him to hear our cry because many of us many of us have different situations and they are situations no man can help you. None. And you need him. Only he can help you. No one can help you. And no one will help you. And this is the one you need to cry out to. And this is how you do it. I'm going to show you the examples again of a couple of examples of men being in need. And one of the one of the examples, I should have mentioned this. One of the examples is a Gentile. When I show you this, the example with the Gentile, it will blow your mind. I mean, how is it that we can allow a Gentile? to reach but he knew this gentile knew something that many people don't know jeremiah 8 and 19 behold the voice of the cry of the daughter of my people because of them that dwell in a far country now here we see because of the daughter of his people dwelling in a far country being in distress they are in distress make no doubt about it and they are crying out to him this is what this is happening today in Lamentations 3, 56, you heard my voice, hid not your ear from my breathing at my cry, at my shua. And I'm going to also show you this other word. This is shua. And the shua is, this is the um, H7768. And it means to cry out, to cry out for help. Okay, this is the past of this word. Sure, and to cry out, cry out for for help. Zaak, this is the Hebrew twenty one ninety nine. It means to cry out, to cry out for help, and this also means uh, gathered together, called together, assembled together, so we can come together in assembly and cry out to Him together. Okay, um, Judges three and nine. When the children of Yasharal cried out to Yahuwah. Yahuwah raised up an, a deliverer for the children of Yasharal who delivered them. And this is Othniel, the son of 
Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother. And this, this, his, his Hebrew name is Othnia. And this guy, this is your first, this is our first judge. They cried out to him for a deliverer. And this is the first judge he raised up for them because they cried out to him because they needed a deliverer. And this is Caleb's younger brother. Judges 3 and 15. But when the children of Yasharah cried out to Yahuwah, Yahuwah raised up a deliverer for them. So here they go again. When they need help, when they need a deliverer, they cry out to him for a deliverer to deliver them. Because without this deliverer, deliver they will be in bondage they will be in captivity or some form of they will follow other mighty ones they will do things what they want to do and he raised up ehud and of course ehud being the second judge of yashara the benjamite left-handed man and this is um this is how he worked this is how he operates and of course, we have no one that we can cry out to to be our leader today because of what's in Ezekiel. He is our shepherd right now. He is the only one we need to cry out to, and he is the only one that will deliver us. We can't cry out for a leader. We are scattered all over the earth. There's no leader, no scripture anywhere said that says one leader will lead all the people out of all the lands we've been scattered into. There's not one scripture to back it. I've searched if there were i would show you but there is there is no scripture okay this is judges 6 i'm gonna read 6 and 7. so yashara was greatly impoverished because of the midianites here they go serving they started serving captivity and the children of yashara cried out to yahuwah just like when they was in egypt they was in bondage hard labor they cried out to him with a loud voice a voice of despair, a voice that was, you could hear it. You could hear this voice. You could hear the distress in their voice. And it came to pass that the children of Yasharal cried out to Yahuwah because of the Midianites. And Yahuwah sent a prophet to them, to the children of Yasharal, who said to them, Thus says Yahuwah, Yasharal, I brought you up out of Egypt. So again, we see him bringing. The, the, he's bringing a prophet. He's raising up a prophet for them. Be why? Because they need help. And when they need help, he was always there. Now, you understand the scripture. When they went into their captivity, when they come out of the captivity, they had a time of shalom. When the time of shalom passed, they went back and forth. And it got to a point where Yahuwah said, okay, enough is enough. This is Joshua 10 and 10 through 14. And the children of Yashara cried out to Yahuwah saying, we have sinned against you because we have both forsaken our Elohim and served other mighty ones. So Yahuwah said to the children of Yashara, did I not deliver you from the Egyptians? Now, he's going back over the list. He's going back and telling them what he's delivered them from. I delivered you from the Egyptians and from the Amorites and from the people of Ammon and the Philistines and the Sidonians, the Amalekites, the Maonites who oppressed you. He's saying, I delivered you from all these people who oppress you and you cry out to me and I delivered you from their hand. Yet you have forsaken me and served other mighty ones. Now, he's done it so many times. He's done it so many times to the point they have made him hot. He is upset with them. And look what he said. You have to get this. You need to go back and read this whole. You need to go back and read this. He says, therefore, I will deliver you no more. Does not this sound familiar? He's saying, I will deliver you no more. He's saying, no more. Enough. Enough of deliver me delivering you. That's it. He says, go and cry out to your other mighty ones which you have chosen. Let them deliver you in your time of distress. And here we are in the time of our distress calling on the Most High. And he's saying, I'm not going to deliver you this time. You call out to them other mighty ones and allow them to deliver you. No more will I deliver you when you cry out to me. And this is something that it's really heavy to, to swallow here. 